Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So now we're going to be dealing with neuromuscular junction disorder. We've learned about everything, about the muscle, the mechanism of muscle contraction and all of that, neuromuscular junction, synaptic transmission. Now, but there are two major disorders that you must know. In fact, it's usually asked during exams, okay? You need to know them. There are problems with the neuromuscular junction. And you must know the difference. They are similar, but there are some different, interesting differences. So your understanding of neuromuscular junction and transmission, okay, will help you really appreciate this. Now, these two disorders, one of them is called myasthenia. Myasthenia gravis. Okay? The other one is called Lambert Eaton Eaton Syndrome. Sometimes they add myasthenic syndrome. Lambert Eaton myasthenic or LEMS, okay? LEMS or L E S, depending, okay? So these are the two major neuromuscular detail that are more common than the rest. There's also a few others. Okay, myasthenia gravis. Okay, so it's a Latin word. Gravis means something grave, something serious. I mean, it's a grave maya. Okay, muscle, sthenia weakness. A grave muscle weakness. <laughs> you understand that? So that's that. This one is just named after someone okay the two the people who discovered it so what exactly is myasthenia gravis okay it's an autoimmune disorder autoimmune that means your own immune cells are attacking certain cells in your body okay in this case they're attacking something in the neuromuscular junction and what is that look at it now you know you have the nerve okay by like supplying this the junction the space there then you now have the muscle okay at this point now so the muscle is muscle membrane is post synaptic you understand acetylcholine will be released to bind to nicotinic receptors Okay, so what happens is that those immune cells, okay, they have a special affinity for the re nicotinic receptors that are on the muscle membrane. Do you understand nicotinic receptor? That acetylcholine will bind to and cause depolarization in the muscle that will now lead to muscle contraction. They go there and destroy. The nicotinic receptors here do you understand that and that is a problem when so many nicotinic receptors are destroyed what do you think will happen very few receptors will be left for acetylcholine to bind and depolarization will not be easy to attain so that's what why it causes weakness of the muscle okay and this it has been found out that this myasthenia gravis of a thing it has what we call a bimodal bimodal distribution of the disease okay between men and women women okay for women it's when women between age 20 to 40 okay some will say 20 to 30 but under 40 okay 
women under 40. Then for men, it's men above 60 years. Do you see how the thing? I don't know why it does like that. But it's the pattern of the disease. So that's that. So what are the symptoms? Now we know what causes it. Autoimmune, nobody really knows what starts it. It's just a disorder that just comes. But in some people, the thymus, okay, where T cells are developed from, you notice that in about 10 to 20 percent of people, it's enlarged. Okay, they call it thymoma, like something like a tumor, benign tumor of the thymus. So sometimes when you remove the thymus, the thymus, it can improve it. Okay, a benign tumor of the thymus. So that's what happens. So how does it present? What are the symptoms of myasthenia gravis? It's of course muscular weakness, but there's some preferential affectation of muscles of the eyes, extraocular muscles, and the muscles of the eyelids, palpebral muscles. Okay. So what what does it result in when the ex the muscles, extraocular muscles, attaching the attaching the eyeballs? Okay, to the skull for movement when it's weak it leads to what is known as diplopia okay diplopia which is what double vision double vision that's diplopia you understand that now diplopia then what else when it affects the um, eyelids Okay, it leads to ptosis. So this one is one. Another one, ptosis. Ptosis, they call it drooping eyelids. And so on and so on. And muscles of the, So it starts from here like this. And even muscles of the hand, okay, your upper limb muscles are more affected than lower limb. So it goes from up down. Facial muscles. So it will cause a kind of sad depressing look because of the some of the paralysis and weakness of facial muscles okay so these are that's 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 the symptoms my stenogram another interesting thing about it is that at rest when you rest the muscles they regain their strength when you just wake up in the morning the muscles are strong but as you are doing activity maybe you are cutting something cutting vegetable little by little you start experiencing the weakness so the weakness manifests with exertion, with exercise and exercising the muscles. Okay, so how do we treat it quickly? Then we'll enter the next one. We use things like immunosuppressants, suppressive drugs to suppress the immune system. So don't attack this nicotinic receptor so much. Okay, those drugs, uh, call them steroids. All right, steroids actually glucocorticoids steroids they help to suppress the immune system okay then something else very important that you can give is you know you have something a cholinesterase that destroys acetylcholine normally so that it can stop your muscular transmission so it doesn't continue for long so you give a drug that opposes that enzyme that inhibits that enzyme that um um, cholinesterase okay so it's called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors inhibitors or you can call it anti cholinesterase okay acetylcholinesterase inhibitors or anti the same thing okay a good well-known one is called neostigmine neostigmine so it will make more acetylcholine to be available so it somehow compounds the effect on this membrane to cause depolarization so it improves the symptoms so these are some of the treatments okay so after the break we're going to be dealing with lambert intin syndrome we're going to be seeing the difference between them but they're also similar all right so don't go anywhere after this break
all right you're welcome back now lambert eating syndrome or lambert eating myasthenic syndrome that means also causes muscle weakness okay so look at what happens now unlike myasthenia grievous this is also an autoimmune okay it's also autoimmune but unlike myasthenia grievous that attacks the nicotinic receptors that's post synaptic this lambert eaton syndrome attacks the presynaptic terminal do you understand that now so what happens you of course from your knowledge of your muscular transmission and all of that there is when action potential reaches the nerve okay uh, voltage gated calcium channels they open Cha calcium now enters and now causes fusion of synaptic vesicles that now releases the acetylcholine that they contain now the autoimmune mechanism is that there there are immune cells that go to attack those calcium voltage gated channels do you understand that now why this one is attacking nicotinic receptor this one is attacking the voltage gated calcium channels on this side so what will happen that means they will not function calcium cannot enter neurotransmitter cannot be released and it will not cause what neuromuscular transmission to go and deploy so you see the effect the final effect is the same but the mechanism is different this one is on this side attacking what is on this side this one is attacking what's on this side okay so they manifest similarly with muscle weakness but look at we had the difference or another difference with them why my standard gravis is has preference for eye muscles face and all that this one has more preference for the lower limbs the legs leg muscles for the press for the proximal part okay and so on and so forth proximal limb muscles okay so most times when they are walking they are trying to climb stairs and all of that we experience difficulty in doing that and this is what happens while in my sternal gravis there's progressive weakness as you are doing work exercising that muscle in this one the weakness is starts when it's at rest as you keep using the muscle you begin to gain more strength so it's just opposite in that sense okay there is weakness as you are using the muscle the muscle now begins to gain you need to gain more strength in the muscle while in my external gravis as you are using the muscle it becomes progressively weaker so that, those are the very important differences about them okay but it's the same autoimmune attacking something in the neuromuscular junction then what is the cause it has been noticed that they Staggering 60 to 70 percent of people with Lambert eating syndrome and they have a certain kind of cancer known as small small cell small cell lung cancer or carcinoma okay lung cancer small the, the type of cancer is small cell lung cancer 60 to 70 percent of people with this state have this kind of cancer so that's why some people they call it what they call paraneoplastic syndrome neoplasm means cancer paraneoplastic syndrome okay that's something a condition that is happening as a result of cancer in another area it's not related muscle affecting muscle and lung cancer. There's no relation. It's called paraneoplastic syndrome. Okay, so that's that's it. So 60 to 70 percent they have this. So how do you treat it? Of course, deal with this lung cancer, and most people find relief when this cancer is dealt with. Of course, the same drug, neostigmine and similar drugs okay that this anticholinesterase drugs also help okay because it's 
neuromuscular junction disorder. They help to provide more acetylcholine. It, it improves it. The same thing to steroids also improve it. So this is basically what you need to know about neuromuscular junction disorders. These two very important diseases. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video.